Greetings, I'm Dr. Crystal Bonickson, cardiologist specializing in adult congenital heart disease. Today I'm joined by Dr. Joseph DeRainey, Chair of Cardiac Surgery at Mayo Clinic, and today we'll be discussing his specialty of robotic and minimally invasive heart surgery for adults with congenital heart disease. Welcome, Dr. DeRainey. Thank you, Crystal. It's a pleasure to be here. Adult patients with congenital heart disease frequently had surgery in childhood. What are some of the reasons why an adult with congenital heart disease might need surgery as an adult? Well, it's actually quite interesting. There are more adults with congenital heart disease than there are children in the current era, mostly because children with congenital heart disease have successful surgery while they're a child, and then they live into the adult years and then develop recurrent problems that may or may not be related to the original diagnosis that they had. So it really is an evolving specialty right now, and there are people like you and me who have had a focus on, on this type of patient. And interestingly enough, the lesions can fall into two general categories. It could be the first, which I just described, where a child was diagnosed early on in life, maybe even at birth or before birth with the prenatal mm -hmm. ultrasounds. They had surgery at a very young age, and then they develop a recurrent problem in the future that needs uh, attention. The other group of patients are those where it was never picked up in childhood. And there is actually a relatively long list of lesions that can sneak through the childhood years, uh, not be picked up by um, a physician or not be picked up on, on any kind of a basic lab test or imaging study early on in life. And the very first procedure is being done um, in the adult years. So those are sort of the two categories of patients that we you know, that we encounter, and cumulatively, there are, there are many patients like that now that need either medical attention with regard to medicine management, or they need an intervention, whether it be in the cath lab or whether it be in the operating room. So when you have these patients that present as adults, how do you approach them differently if it's their first operation versus if it's a repeat operation? So if it's a repeat operation, which the majority of them are, and sometimes it may, be, it may be operation three, four, or five, there are some lesions that characteristically need repeated procedures over the course of a lifetime. And so the complexity of that can be quite difficult. It can be quite difficult because the reentry into the chest can be complicated because of scar tissue or they may need multiple things done. There may be residual holes in the heart, there may be more than one valve that has a problem, and so the magnitude of the operation itself you know, can be quite large. Now, if it's a primary operation, of course, which is what the theme of what we're gonna be talking about is, everybody's interested in, in you know, the minimally invasive way to approach it. And that is an emphasis in, in general cardiac surgery in the current era uh, just by itself. I mean, we are trying to find more and more minimally invasive ways to approach things, small incisions, robotic arms to do things. Sometimes it's in conjunction with you and your colleagues in the cath lab where we're using catheters, but maybe a little incision is required, and it's a combination of surgery and a cath lab procedure. So a lot of different options, but the minimally invasive approach is applied mostly to a first-timer. So can you tell me more about the minimally invasive approach? What are the different approaches that are available and how's that different from a standard operation? So in general, the standard open heart operation is with a vertical incision up and down in the front that I think most people um, you know, are familiar with, the sternotomy. Mm -hmm. And um, the advantage of that incision is that the surgeon can deal with any problem that they encounter during the course of surgery. If there's anything unexpected that's identified in the operating room or if there's a problem that occurs, you can deal with any of those things through a sternotomy. Everything is controlled. When we do a minimally invasive approach, it generally is an incision on the side or it is a partial division of the sternum in the middle. So effectively, the incision is smaller. There's some um, understanding that the smaller incisions mean less pain, and that's true to some degree, but not always. The ultimate in minimally invasive surgery is the robotic approach, where we have a very, very small incision, and then the arms of the robot go in through essentially three separate stab wounds, and that is the most currently uh, available minimally invasive approach to heart surgery in the, at, at the present time. So which kind of congenital lesions could we approach with a robotic approach? Well, unfortunately, there's only a short list at the present time, and that's mostly because of, of the technology. Although it's advanced rapidly in the last decade, there still is room for improvement. For example, the patient needs to be, relatively speaking, close to adult size, just because the arms of the robot with its elbows require some space to do. 
but the technology is changing, and I think that in the next 10 years, we'll be able to see this apply to smaller and smaller patients. I mean, infants and toddlers are still not, not in the equation yet, but adolescents uh, for sure. Uh, and so that is the, you know, and then there's the list of lesions. Holes in the heart would be a classic one. Those are relatively straightforward to do with this type of approach and valve related problems, but mostly the mitral valve or the tricuspid valve. Those are uh, a valve that you can approach through a little incision on the side. The aortic valve and the pulmonary valve, which also happen to be popular abnormalities in the congenital patient, we can do through limited incisions, but really not with a robot at the present time. But I think in the next five to 10 years, that will be possible too. So in a patient that may be a candidate for minimally invasive surgery, are there other specific characteristics about the patient that might make them not a candidate? Yes. So the first is, is, is um, the function of their heart and the magnitude of the heart problem. We can do multiple things. We can fix valves or replace them. We can close holes. We can do arrhythmia procedures. There are some situations where we can do limited coronary bypass grafting with the help of a robot. Um, we, we cannot do um, multiple procedures, multiple valve replacements or valve repairs uh, unless there are very specific situations. The second thing is, is vascular issues because when we do the robotic approach, we're cannulating the internal jugular vein, we're cannulating the femoral artery and the groin, and so we don't want to have peripheral vascular disease, which fortunately is uncommon in, in, in the adult congenital patient because they still are relatively young in their second, third, or fourth decade of life. Um, body habitus is also an issue. Um, so we have a, a BMI of approximately 32 or less. If somebody is, 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 is very overweight, it makes the manipulation of the vasculature peripherally and, and, and the hardware going through the chest wall a little bit different. So those would be some anatomic or body habitus uh, or physiologic things that might preclude it. So you mentioned the vascular things. Are there other specific risks to using the robot? Well, there are. I mean, the, when we cannulate you know, vessels in the legs and in the neck, you do have to be cognizant of, of problems that you can cause by, by doing that. Now, fortunately, those problems are very, very uh, uh, infrequent. And as long as you stick to basic principles where you know what to do to avoid those problems happening, they should be, you know, rarely, if ever, um, they should rarely, if ever, occur. So you mentioned that using the robotic approach or a minimally invasive approach uses smaller incisions. So you said maybe less pain for the patient. Mm -hmm. Are there other potential benefits to the patient? Absolutely. The first is that the overall insult to the human body is reduced dramatically. So <clears throat> whenever we have a, a surgical procedure, any kind of surgical procedure, that involves invasion of a body cavity and general anesthesia, it is a big hit to the body. And so now we're talking about an incision that's this big versus a standard incision. So pain oftentimes is less, the risk of infection is less, the recovery from surgery is less. So for a robotic patient, they're typically in the hospital three days as opposed to five to seven days and they can be back to work at two to three weeks instead of six to eight weeks. So the benefits are, you know, are multifactorial. Yeah, I know. Plus the cosmetic thing, of course, which is very important to important many people. That's important to young patients. Yes. And really for my young patients, you know, the time off of work or off of school if they're a student is really, really important. Absolutely. Now we know that for patients with congenital heart disease, it's incredibly important that they have their operations done by surgeons who are experts in congenital mm -hmm. heart disease. Are there specific questions that a patient should ask their surgeon about the robotic approach to surgery? Well, first, as you alluded to, I think that it's been well documented now in the literature that the results of surgery in adults with congenital heart disease is better when they are taken care of by personnel, either medical people like you or surgical people like me that are formally trained in it. That's the first thing. Now when you get into the robotic approach, I think probably the first thing that needs to be clear to the, it, it, through the eyes of the patient is that you want to make sure that your surgeon or whoever is going to be involved with a procedure first is experienced with congenital heart disease and then is experienced with the minimally invasive approach, in this case, the robot. And those two things need to be clarified because there are many robotic surgeons that will, that will play around with some of the more simple congenital heart defects. And there may be times when that's appropriate, but there may be times when it's not appropriate. And I think that you wanna make sure that the surgeon or the interventionalist is very, very comfortable with whatever the procedure is that's being done and the team. 
So, Are there specific issues related to the team or the number of surgeons involved? So, the, yes, I, we believe that there is. And, and, and for, the, for the patient community that may not uh, appreciate this nuance is that when we do something robotically, there's a team at the bedside that is applying the instrumentation and passing things, instruments and sutures through a small incision. And then there is another surgeon that is remote from the table in the corner of the operating room sitting at the console. In our practice, we have a faculty surgeon at the bedside and we have a faculty surgeon at the console so that we have experience in both settings. We have you know, two brains that are knowledgeable. We have four eyes and four hands that really know what's going on. And then of course the allied health and the OR are very, very accustomed. They're used to the terminology. They're used to the instrumentation. You have to have a polished team. So what do you think is in store for the future with regards to robotic surgery? Are there plans to try to apply this to other congenital lesions yeah. other than the simple things you've discussed? Yes. So the, the technology is evolving rapidly. And now the next phase of, of robotic technology will be limited. Now I said we have one incision and we have three separate stab wounds in the chest where the arms, the small arms that are about the size of a pen, maybe slightly bigger, go through the chest wall. And while that is, is, is much more cosmetically appealing than a formal scar up and down in the chest, it still is, you know, four little scars on the chest. Now, the technology will be that through one incision, all of the arms can go in. It'll almost be like an octopus with the arms all going in. So that's the first thing. So the technology will be evolving so that it yet gets even less invasive. And then, of course, the, the technology of the arms. I mean, right now there's elbows with cables, and that will get better too. And I think once that gets refined even further, we then can apply this to smaller and smaller patients. So as the technology evolves, I think we'll be able to apply it to a greater spectrum of lesions. Right now, it's limited to the very easiest lesions that we can access the easiest. The access of the other ones that are a little more challenging will be easier to do once this technology gets further refined. So I think the future is very, very bright uh, for, you know, for the surgical side of, of, of helping these patients. Sounds incredibly exciting it to is. have these new opportunities for it our is. patients. It is. Thank you, Dr. Duraney, for joining us today and sharing these very important insights into congenital heart disease using a robotic approach. Well, thank you, Dr. Bonickson, for having me. I hope we've been helpful to the medical community and the patient community, and I look forward to sharing many more patients with you. Excellent. Thank you much. And thank you for joining us today. If you would like more information about robotic heart surgery at Mayo Clinic, please feel free to contact us.